Hello my fellow book addicts, Megan here, and time for another book view. Today, I'm going to be talking about Soldier by Julie Kagawa, and this is book three in the Talon Saga. Oh my god, what can I say about this book? I am not going to go into too many details because, spoilers, but I will say that this might be my favorite out of the series yet. Just quite a few bombs were dropped on us in this book, and I just found myself staring at the pages in shock at some of them. Like, one or two of them, I kind of figured what would happen. Like, some of them I saw coming somewhat, some of them I guessed or half-guessed, but, you know, I was still pretty shocked reading them. We're getting the same points of view that we got in the last book. We got Dante, Ember, Riley, and Garrett. So the whole book is kind of divided up between the four of them. And I have to say, each and every narrator made things interesting. I was not bored during anyone's sections. So, you know, I was constantly entertained. Like I said, those few bumps that were dropped on us were just full of oh my god moments, especially near the end. Like... I freaked out a bit at the end, I won't lie, I kind of freaked out at the end. So, because there's not much more I can say without giving spoilers, or risk giving some potential spoiler, I am going to go into a more spoilery bit, so if you have not read this far yet, I suggest you click away now and come back after you catch up. I will start with a slight negative feeling. I have issues with love triangles. I either love them or I hate them, it depends how it's done. Some love triangles I think are done well, and others I just do not like. And I can't say I know for sure how I feel about this love triangle yet, the one between Riley, Garrett, and Ember. Like, there are times where it kind of annoys me, because it's like, guys, you have a little more on your plate than you can handle. Do you really want to throw some romance in there as well? But to be fair, they do acknowledge, yeah, this isn't the time, this isn't the time, though it keeps coming up, but, you know, I don't hate it, but I can't say I absolutely love it either. And I will say I do think, just based on past experiences with love triangles, it's, I feel that Ember is going to go with Carrot, despite the fact that Riley is supposedly her life mate, as we find out in this series, there is a whole lot that Talon has been just erasing from dragon knowledge, and that's one of them. Because, you know, if other dragons knew that life mates were a thing, that would kind of divide their loyalty between Talon and the other dragon. And, you know, they can't have that. They want all dragons to be strictly loyal to them. So, you know, that whole word and the knowledge of it is just kind of struck from their language and vocabulary. And the twist that Garrett learns about St. George and Talon. I honestly can't remember if I actually verbally said this or not, because I haven't watched my other two reviews since I filmed them. I feel it's really weird watching my own videos. I get annoyed at the sound of my own voice and I cringe. Just all the cringing. So I can't remember if I had the theory of Talon and St. George working together. I probably didn't, because I'm not that smart. We find out that Talon and St. George are in cahoots with each other. Not all of Talon knows this, obviously, because quite a few dragons would not be happy, you know, working with their enemy. And basically only the Patriarch in St. George knows about this little deal, because he was kind of tricked into it. Talon's been kind of slipping information to St. George, along with money, being like, yeah, here's where you can find some dragons, why don't you go take care of them? And basically these dragons are either dragons that will not join Talon for whatever reason. T dragons who escape Talon, like Riley's rogues, or just dragons that are in their way for one reason or another. And St. George doesn't know there's a difference. To them, all dragons are part of Talon, all dragons are evil, and any dragon that they manage to take down is one less dragon to worry about. So, you know, they don't really question why they're having so many more raids than usual. Some have commented on it, but, you know, they don't really raise much of a fuss because, hey, we're taking down dragons, this is awesome, we're doing our duty. 
Garrett found this out while he was on his own. In the last book, he kind of left Riley, Wes, and Ember and went off to England, you know, to spy on the patriarch because something didn't feel right to him. So for a part of this book, they're trying to find proof of this because in order for them to be taken seriously, they need really hard, undeniable proof of this. Which, you know, Talon actually has. But it's not going to be too simple for them to get. She, you know, they got to kind of break into a Talon storage place, which will be heavily guarded. And before I get too much further, I absolutely loved Jade. I really hope we get to see some more of her in the next book. And I was really sad that we didn't get more of her in this book. She was really awesome. She was interesting and I want to know more about her. Especially when we find out that she was an adult dragon. She wasn't a hatchling like Ember or Juvelin like Riley. She is a full-fledged adult. So she is pretty old. And just the knowledge that she could give Riley and Ember. She is an eastern dragon. She lives in Asia. And just I love learning about something other than like the western dragons. Like, like, I really liked how there was a distinction between them. A lot of Eastern dragons want nothing to do with Talon. They just want to be left alone with their shrines and live in peace and be left alone. Like Jade was living. Until Talon sent St. George after her because she would not join Talon. Like, I find Jade also really interesting. Talon is trying to convince, you know, dragons that they don't have emotions like humans. But Jade, I think, shows some pretty human emotion. She does show some compassion, especially for her monks. You know, the monks that St. George killed while they were storming her temple, she genuinely seemed to mourn them. She was saddened by their loss. And the monks that she unknowingly put in danger in the U.S., she wanted to protect them. She did not want to see another temple burn and its monks butchered by St. George. Those seem like some pretty human emotions if you ask me. I just, I really hope we see more of her to learn more about what Talon is trying to erase from dragon knowledge. And those creepy vessels that they, Talon has Dante training, they are creepy as hell. Though, you know, part of me still wants to know more about them, like how this project got started, what is going to be done with these really efficient killing machines. And it'd be cur I'm curious to see what Ember's reaction to them is going to be. She is not going to be happy. She is probably going to be terrified of these things and mortified that her twin has been working with them. I don't think Emma is going to be too happy with everything Dante's been doing. Not at all. And I was so glad to see that Tristan didn't totally turn on Garrett. Like, Tristan still had enough faith in Garrett to hear him out about this news on the patriarch that Garrett has. And once he sees the proof, he believes him. He doesn't like it, but he believes them, and he understands that this information needs to get out. It's going to put St. George in total disorder, but it needs to be let out. Their leader, the supposedly incorruptible leader, has been corrupted by Talon. And this will not do. Not even the Patriarch is safe from the punishment of treason, which is death. And with Tristan's help, they are able to get this information to St. George's most high level officers and they cannot deny that this is very substantial evidence and it cannot be ignored. Unfortunately the Patriarch demands trial by combat. He will be fighting Garrett to the death or until one of them submits. And Garrett can't really back down because if he does it supposedly proves his guilt in that he is lying about this evidence and all that. And, you know, if he dies and or gives up during the trial, he is also guilty and the Patriarch is innocent. Not the best, you know, system to prove guilt and innocence. It's very outdated. It's very medieval. But Garrett's kind of trapped there and he can't do anything except, except. So him and the Patriarch are going to be fighting to the death. 
And the patriarch is a tricky guy. He is not willing to let this dragon loving kid outsmart him. And things during the trial, which, you know, the patriarch decides, I want to use swords, which Garrett is not very skilled in. It's taught while they're training, but not heavily focused on. It's more taught as part of tradition than anything else. So, as they're fighting, the patriarch is trying to egg Garrett into making a mistake and drops a few interesting bombs. His parents, who Garrett has been raised, being told that they were killed by dragons, killed by Talon, were actually technically killed by St. George. His parents were dragon servants. They worked for Talon. And that was kind of a, oh shit, moment to me. I did not see that coming and just, that was one of the points where I was staring at the book for a good solid minute or two, just needing that to sink in. So Garrett wasn't too happy to find out that his parents were killed by St. George. He was spared because the guy leading the raid saw him, you know, this tiny little kid, you know, five, six years old, and he thought maybe they could teach him better. Maybe they could cleanse him of this dragon taint. And, you know, it kind of worked out considering Garrett couldn't remember anything that happened. Like, his child mind kind of just blocked out his mother and his father's death. So, fueled by this knowledge and this rage, Garrett manages to basically get the Patriarch down. And the Patriarch forfeits because he knows Garrett has him trapped. He is going to die and he basically forfeits. But, when Garrett's back is turned, he pulls a very big jerk move and shoots Garrett. And because this is kind of breaking the rules, Tristan, who is a witness, instantly pulls out his gun and shoots the Patriarch. You know, the guy was gonna die anyway because he committed treason, so Tristan is the one to pull the trigger. And we kind of end that part of the book with Ember holding poor Garrett's bleeding body and his eyes closing and him stopping moving. Seem it seems pretty safe to assume that he is dead. But you know, this also kind of happened in another book by Julie Cadwa in the Iron Fae series and that didn't happen. So based on how that situation was resolved, I am not holding my breath on Garrett being dead. I, I'm pretty sure he might survive that. That was just kind of thrown in as shock to get us really anxious for the next book, I think. I refuse to believe that he is dead until it's actually very clearly stated that he is dead. And backtracking a bit to the whole love triangle between Riley, Garrett, and Ember. In this book, Ember makes it very clear she chooses Garrett. How that will hold up throughout the rest of the series, who knows? I personally think it's gonna stay Garrett for the love interest. I do like how Riley kind of handles it by the end of this book. You know, throughout most of it, he's kind of like, uh, nope, nope, we are meant to be together, yada, yada, yada. Forget about the soldier, yada, yada, yada. But by the end of this, he's like, you know what? I'm a dragon. I have time. I can be patient. You, you'll come around eventually. Because dragons live for centuries, humans, not so much. You know what, if they're supposed to be life mates, they have time to make that happen. And for the final little bomb that was dropped on us, we find out who Dante and Ember's mother is. Apparently, their mother is the leader of Talon, the oldest living dragon around. Meaning Ember and Dante are kind of like her heirs, which explains why Talon was so anxious to get Ember back into the fold. And how they aren't willing to kill her on sight like they would any other rogue. Because Ember is valuable. So if they can save her, they're going to. So I am extremely interested to see where that leads and how Ember handles that news if she ever finds out. And now that St. George is without a leader, Things are going to be pretty dang chaotic. Is Talon going to make a move to try and really destroy St. George? 
is St. George going to take forever to find a new leader? Because not only did they lose a leader, they lost a leader who was corrupted. So who else might be working for Talon? And if Garrett lives, what's going to happen to him? Is St. George still going to be hunting Garrett down? Is he still going to be public enemy number one? Are some people going to be happy that, you know, he outed their corrupt leader? Or are they going to hate him even more for bringing this news to them? I have a feeling book four is going to be pretty intense and I gladly welcome it because things are going to get good. So all in all, this was pretty amazing. Like definitely has to be my favorite out of the series so far. So I'm going to just stop myself here and say once again, I do recommend this book. So yeah, that is it for this book for you and I hope to see you guys next time. Keep on reading my fellow book addicts. Keep on reading.